how to join this conversation is on facebook.com slash join news on tv and on twitter is at join news on tv now the national communications authority has sanctioned a total of 131 FM authorization holders, it says, have violated various aspects of the Electronics Communications Act, Act uh, 2009, Act 775. Now, the NCA has since revoked the licenses of 21 other radio stations for non compliance. Well, some have described the action as a political witch hunt with some of the affected stations accusing the authority of targeting NDC-affiliated radio stations. And the question I ask, what's your take on the NCA's sanctions? The media system right now in Ghana is in a mess, and we need a uh, sort of control to control the media. Because if you have radio stations paying people like 100 CD a month, 50 CD a month, what's the output? It's, it's a good move, but just that it should be uh, it shouldn't be like, we shouldn't relate it to party or it shouldn't be partisan. So Ideally, that's the work, that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, so there, there is a rule. You go by it or you, you're cut off, simply that. So I don't get um, the, the issue about people raising, uh, giving it some political um, inclinations or let me say some affiliations to it. It's the but I see that what the NCA did is actually right because, yeah, that's what they have to do. Nobody can set measures for them. They are, they are independent bodies, so I think what they did is really right, and they are on the go to do more than what they want to do. I think it's, it's one of the political witch hunting, because in the previous administration, those radio stations were in sanction, they weren't paying, but here comes a new administration, a new board, a new, a new setup of leaders, so they are also trying to, I mean, you know, Put those okay those down so that they will pave way for 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 their political ideologies. Well, also, uh, we'll be bringing you some Facebook comments uh, a bit later. But also, the question has been three or four yes. That has been the debate ever since subsequent governments decide that to change the duration to suit their party policy. I'm talking about secondary school education. Now, the NPP administration and the ex-president Kufour changed the duration from three to four years. Now, the NDC comes in and the late President Mills and reverses it to three years and that was also maintained by ex-president Mahama uh, when he took over of course what do you expect well now the Kufuado led government is considering a possible change back to four years minister of planning professor Jan Bafo dropped the hint adding government is currently assessing the effectiveness of the current three-year uh, period and will soon make a firm decision on that what do you make of government's intention Yes, of course. I think that we should change it because now we have small, small children coming to SS. Teenagers, you see them small, small, graduating from SS to the university and it's so bad. And some of them are not, not matured enough to be in the university. I think it should be from three to four years because by the time um, you are done with the four-year system, um, you would be more matured and then know what you are about. Yes, I think because uh, during my time I did a four years program so it helped a lot. The three years didn't pass as are the four years. So those who did the four years so it helped a lot. No, I don't think we should change because it's going to delay the students time. The number of time they are going to spend in school is going to be delayed. The reason why I think the government wants to change is because they want the education to be quality, but if they are looking at the quality of the education, I think they should provide facilities, better facilities and better students, rather than prolong the number of time the students will stay in school. And so many uh, uh, comments are coming on Facebook, Israel. Let's start with um, our first story right. that had to do with the NCA. Then we'll come to the secondary school uh, issue. 
All right, so Otenya Mponsa says revoking licenses won't pay the debt, allow them to work and give them time to settle their state. This is common sense. Why do we have to add to the already precarious state of unemployment in this country? Today, GCB sacks more than 700 UT workers, and today you're revoking licenses of 231 uh, stations. Have you thought of the job losses? Francis Damwa says, why is it that it's only the NDC stations that are presumed to be targeted? Does it mean they refuse to pay taxes because they were in government? Let's be reasonable in commenting on the issues as and when they come. Uh, Mangait says, such revoked licenses should be restored, but they should rather be fined. This will ensure people don't lose jobs while still serving as enough punishment. Bayer Jeremiah says, those with that school of thought are wrong. As any of the affected stations come out to challenge the reasons they have been sanctioned. Thus, that also means that those stations who did not follow the rules of the game NCA laws during NDC regime because they are affiliated to NDC, they can challenge the reasons of their sanctions if they feel they did nothing wrong against the NCA laws. And Kwesi Boatanya writes, if truly those stations whose licenses have been revoked are pro-NDC stations, then indeed they are, they are nation wreckers. Why should you operate without obeying the laws of the land? A law which banned Galamse is not different from the law which regulates radio stations. Just obey laws like multimedia and on one, no one will witch hunt you. Then Kwesi Bie says they should continue to use the laws of Ghana to make sure that they obey them. We don't care whether they are NDC or NPP affiliated radio stations. What we want is the right thing to be done. And James Abusanga writes, our airwaves needs to be filtered beyond revoking of licenses because it is regard for elders and the use of abusive language on innocent Ghanaians perpetrated by these radio stations is a not 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 and those are some interesting comments on the nca issue now israel let's move on to the secondary school three or four years all right so prissy akria says if four years will do better than three years and five years will do better than four years and six years will do better than five oh, years now you are continue. rhyming you politicians <laughs> to leave our true educational system alone three years is enough we can't spend all our life in school and still come out with no jobs available focus on creating jobs and leave the education system. Abu Lansani says, he writes uh, from uh, Damongo, says, it's very sad politics stays the center stage of flagship ideas. The four year duration to me was the best, even though some people thought it was stressful, but results were always good. Bringing it back would be good. It needs a legislative instrument. Husseini says, politicians should stop playing with the life and future of our youth. This three years, four years thing caused failure for some of us in the 2013 academic year, when we wrote in two batches, it's enough. We should stop playing politics with education. And Nyaba says they can even make it 10 years. Why do you go about making unthinkable policies like you're dealing with animals? It's, it's not their problems. Ghanaians wanted unreasonably radical solutions, so they voted for them. Instead of asking for our opinions, let's keep quiet and watch and those are some interesting comments on facebook now finally you know the atmosphere always changes anytime there is love in the air but one thing people are not sure of is whether that word true love truly exists well while some people feel true love does exist and can really be felt if shown others feel true love does not and will never exist. It can be seen and felt at the same time. That's what uh, another school of thought says. But I need you to tell me, how does true love feel? When people actually love themselves, yeah, they care, they, they show so much care, they don't look at their errors. And that is why we even go to the extent of saying love is blind. So true love knows no error. It knows no mistake. I mean, it uh, looks at the imperfection perfectly. I mean, you feel true love when truly loved, when um, you know that the person that you are involved in understands you. Because personally, material things doesn't show that somebody loves you. Because the person can is might be generous in nature. Yeah, true love is a deep connection that you feel with someone when you first meet them. So then it starts with a the connection. Then as time goes on, you begin to maybe 
um, this court. Then as you court, you begin to get to know each other. Then with time, you realize that the love between you two has grown wider then that's when you actually realize that maybe this is the person i want to spend the rest of my life with it's not only about the material things it's not about the money it's about how you feel well, actually i'm someone who doesn't believe in love i don't believe that that thing called love exists no i i don't believe that it exists because from how um we are made to understand how it says or how it's supposed to be i've never seen okay so israel all right. Does true love exist? It does exist. <laughs> it does. It does. And I think very I, want rare, to, I want to agree with you. It's very rare, but it's, it's you rare. can see and feel it if uh, you know you see one or right. if it's being shown. Let's check out what you've been posting on Prince Facebook. Prince Ruling says, I've partially experienced it. It is give and take. Joyce Chen says, food for thought. Let's discuss, but isn't my case yet. Fake lovers in Kwa, <laughs> especially when they realize you are financially fine. But thank God we are much smarter. <laughs> Michael Asari says, certainly true love does exist. The only factor that hinders others from experiencing it is that they tend to focus on the wrong people. True love tastes like serving a big piece of chicken to a child during Christmas in the olden days. You realize that you will cherish, lick, and hold on to it till the last bite. Gofi Sam says, true love existed, but now it has become something which is there. <laughs> the ladies are replaced Debbie Debbie B year with a bing da da, thereby aging <laughs> true love. <laughs> okay, so this this thing called true love <laughs> is a this thing, all right? Yes. But you know that we promised you we would be giving you some breast cancer tips every day on Joy News Interactive for the whole month of October because it's breast cancer month. Today, we're talking about reproductive risk factors of breast cancer. Cancers are most common in older women. But the World Health Organization says younger women are now at risk at contracting this deadly disease. Today, we dwell on reproductive risk factors and they include being younger, that is before age 12, when you first had your menstrual period, starting menopause at a later age, that is after age 55, being older after age 35 at the birth of your first child, never giving birth, never breastfeeding for a long duration, that is one year plus, and long-term use of hormone replacement therapy. Join us tomorrow with more tips on identifying, preventing, and treating breast cancer. All right, now, let's no, check so out. we're doing all these tips because Aisha is refusing to volunteer. And, uh, <laughs> oh, Israel. <laughs> tell us how to examine breasts. Properly. Don't bring this again, Israel. Yeah.